Okay, welcome back. So in the last video, we, uh, we proved this positive result for the dynamically available setting, which suffices to uh, separate the dynamically available and fully permissionless settings. Okay, uh, what I want to do in this video is to just briefly sketch a, a negative result for the dynamically available setting. And then later on, this will give us uh, one way of separating the dynamic available and quasi permissionless settings. Okay, so here's the, the statement of the result. Um, <clears throat> so basically what this is saying is that uh, protocols uh, in the dynamically available setting uh, can't solve consensus. Okay, Dynamically available protocols can't solve um, consensus in partial synchrony. Okay, so more precisely then the statement of the theorem is as follows. So there is no zero resilient protocol solving probabilistic Byzantine agreement in a dynamically available authenticated and partially synchronous setting. Okay, so the fact that the, the theorem is stated for zero resilient protocols means that, you know, the result holds even when the, you know, the adversary can't hold any resources. We haven't actually formally defined like, what we mean by probabilistic Byzantine agreement. Um, as a formal definition in the paper, but um, basically that just says what you'd expect it to. Okay, it means that for any security parameters are epsilon greater than zero, the protocol has to solve um, BA Byzantine agreement with probability greater than one minus epsilon. Okay, uh, when we say we're in the authenticated setting here, that just means we have a signature scheme available. Okay, so that makes the, the impossibility, impossibility result stronger. Uh, and to remind you, it's a, the fact that we're in the partially synchronous setting means that message delivery is, is eventually always reliable. Okay, so we're allowed periods of uh, asynchrony where message delivery is, is not reliable. Uh, <clears throat> but there, yeah, there, there, there is this unknown point called G GST after which message delivery is always reliable. Okay, so that's the statement of the theorem. It's uh, obviously a, it's a negative result. As I say, this will later on be useful in separating the dynamically available uh, and quasi-permissionless settings. And what I want to do now is just to sort of sketch the result at a high level. Okay, that's going to give us a sort of cartoon version of the proof. Um, for the details, again, I'll refer you to the paper. Okay, so how are we going to prove this? Well, towards a contradiction, let's fix a zero resilient protocol that solves probabilistic Byzantine agreement in a dynamically available and partially synchronous setting. Okay, and then consider a finite set of players P, all of whom are honest. Okay, so there's no need for Byzantine action here. We'll partition P into two non empty sets, P0 and P1. Okay, and we'll suppose the players of PI receive protocol input I. Okay, so players in P0 receive input 0, players in P1 receive input 1. Okay, we'll also suppose all players, if you want to consider external resources, all players have uh, non-zero external resources. If you want to consider stake, then let's just suppose everyone starts off with, with um, one unit of stake. Okay, the details there aren't too important. Okay, and then what we do is consider a network partition Okay, during which messages disseminated by players in each PI are received by other players in PI, but not by players in P1 minus I. Okay, so if you're in P0, any message you disseminate you know, for, for the duration of this network partition, any message you disseminate is received by players in P0 right, uh, at the next time slot, let's say, but not by players in P1 until after the network partition is over. And similarly, if you're in P1, Every message you disseminate is received by the players in P1 at the next time slot, but not by players in P0 until the network partition is over. Okay, well, what happens then? Well, because the protocol is assumed to solve probabilistic Byzantine agreement in the dynamic available setting, right, if the network partition is sufficiently long, then the validity and termination conditions force players in P0 to be significant probability terminate and output zero right before the network partition is over and why is that well that's because from their standpoint right the protocol execution is indistinguishable from a synchronous protocol execution in which the active player set is a p0 okay, and if we're in, in the dynamically available setting that means okay that we then have to, to, to terminate and output zero Okay, so that's for, the, that's for the players in P0. Okay, they ultimately have to terminate in output zero even before the network partition is over. And similarly, by a symmetric argument, players in P1 have to, again, with significant probability, terminate in output one. Okay, and that immediately leads to a violation of the agreement condition. Okay, so it's a very simple proof sketch. 
Let me see if you want to write down the details. And it's a, it's a little bit more fuddy. The, the details are in the paper. Okay, but the basic conclusion is that dynamically available protocols can't control consensus in partial sequence. Okay, so at this point, let's summarize where we've got so far. Just uh, uh, solidify everything we've got so far. Okay, so so far, we defined the fully permissionless setting, first of all, without resource restrictions. Okay, and then we showed that consensus is not possible in that setting. That motivated the introduction of resources, right? So then what we did next is consider how to model resources. For us, resources are either external or on-chain. Once we defined uh, we'll set up a framework for talking about resources, then we define the fully permissionless setting with resource restrictions. And we saw a negative result that uh, showed that protocols solving Byzantine agreement in a fully permissionless setting cannot be deterministic. Okay, there will obviously we know that there are populistic protocols solving Byzantine agreement in a fully permissionless setting. Okay, there are probabilistic protocols can function there, but they, they can't be de deterministic. Then we defined the dynamically available setting. Okay, then we separated the dynamically and fully permissionless settings by showing that dynamically available protocols for Byzantine agreement uh, can be deterministic. Okay, well we, we know that's not true for fully permissionless protocols. Okay, then just now in this video, we saw that dynamically available protocols for Byzantine agreement cannot operate in partial synchrony. So that's where we are so far, and the rest of the videos, uh, this is roughly what we'll do. So we'll, we'll go on to consider forms of on-chain resource other than stake. Okay. Then we'll define the quasi-permissionless setting. Okay, and then we'll see multiple results separating the quasi-permissionless and dynamically available settings. Okay, and the last thing we want to do is to find a nice way of separating the quasi-permissionless and per uh, permission settings. To do that, what we'll do first of all is to re revisit what it means for the adversary to row bound with respect to on-chain resources. And once we've done that, then we'll use that analysis to produce a separation between the quasi-permissionless and permission settings. Okay, great. So uh, I will see you in the next video.